her husband join me in the studio, her husband Simon. Thank you very much for joining me. Mm, so it's really nice to meet you both. I, I read about your story and really was compelled to talk to you because a lot of people you know, go through things where they are misdiagnosed and, or, and then other things happen and then it's too late to do anything about it. Ashley, tell me a little bit about your story. Um, I had symptoms. I had a lump in my breast and mm. funny colouring around my breast. Um, my youngest at the time was five months old. Mm. I went to my GP who said, oh, it's mastitis. And I said, it's absolutely not. So we looked through the risk factors of breast cancer and she said, you're far too young, um, you've got no family history, so it's not breast cancer. Um, I don't need to refer you to anywhere. And I basically just sat and refused to leave until she did. You see, that's, that's the thing, is it? Now I know of, of a gentleman who we spoke to, who I spoke to on the show, and it was during the lockdown and he actually refused to leave the car park of the GP surgery until somebody saw him. Yeah. Then when they saw him, they realised how serious it was. But yeah. it, it, right. these situations are going on and on all the time, people being misdiagnosed. So eventually the diagnosis of breast yes. cancer was given. Yeah, um, in May 2022, just before lockdown, um, I was diagnosed. I had chemotherapy alone because I couldn't have any of my family there. I had a single mastectomy. I had radiotherapy and then we got the all clear. Um, until symptoms started arising. And, and what were the symptoms? Um, my secondary symptoms were things like headaches, forgetfulness, bone pain. I had swelling near my liver. Um, I had a gallbladder issue, which we think might have arised from the cancer in my liver, but we can't prove that. Um, and I presented to my teams and my doctors with these signs. The doctors were just saying it's part of your... What's it called? It's like your side effects of your medication, um, which I thought, well, surely not. Not that many. Well, Simon, I mean, you've been going through this with, with Ashley. Mm, yeah. Mm. I mean, how, how have you been faring with all this? Um, it's just, you know, it's been a nightmare. You know, I've got... Like I said, four small kids are trying to fit work in and, you know, mm. I'm having to take time away to help my partner. Mm. Um, but it's just, you know, you come to realisation every day that, you know, she's not going to be there one day. And, you know, it's, it's just really tragic. And, you know. and what kind of work is it that you do? Well, I'm just working at um, a food production place at the moment. Um, I mean, you know, they are helping me out. They're, you know, giving me time off as and when for my partner's appointments. Um, so, you know, they are, you know, doing a good bit. And, I mean, you've got four children. I mean, that's, so, that's so upsetting because they're very young, aren't they? Yeah, they are. My main worry is that my three-year-old won't remember me when I'm gone. Um, with him only being three, if I only live for three years, he's only going to be six. And the only memories he will have are the memories what people tell him. So, so what are you doing now? Is that, I mean, are you working? What, what's your I'm, plan? I'm currently... Um, I am still employed, but I'm not allowed to go to work. Um, we found out Thursday that it's now progressed to the brain. Um, we don't know what that means. I've got to have radiotherapy to the brain next week. It's got a really good success rate, so hopefully it does something, but there's always the possibility that it might not. Well, I mean, you're young. That, that's definitely yeah. on your side. <clears throat> They're coming up with all sorts of different advances in cancer. Absolutely. And I was reading one treatment the other day where they um, used the herpes virus to do something and it, it, you know, somebody ended up being free of cancer <clears throat> for years. I mean, there's, there's lots of things at the moment that, yeah. uh, you, you know, we, we never know that how successful that is. I've, I mean, I've got a lady who came in, she works for a company, well, she set up a charity called Cure Cancer. And uh, they told her that she had a short time to live. She's, she's here like 20 years later. Yeah. Come on. So there, is, there is that. Brilliant. And, and what about the children? How, how have you sort of spoken to them about it? We're very open and honest. They know everything, but only what they need to know. Mm. Um, they know that I'm very ill. I'm not going to live as long as other mums do. Um, we won't get forever, and eventually I will have to go to heaven. But I'm going to fight for as long as I can. And that's... Basically, all they need to know. 
But, but today, it's the first time down in London as well. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe it. You're 27. Yeah. You'll have been in London by then. <laughs> and you're going to get to see the sites. Absolutely. That's brilliant. My producers put together a list of things that you should go and see. Yeah, you get to go and do that. Definitely. Well, listen, we really appreciate you coming mm. uh, to see us. And